Hello and welcome to Attingham Park, the first episode. So, what I'm going to be trying to do in this kind of like mini-series, you could say, is basically just try out all the features now that we can combine together. So, we'll be doing the Farmhand series and the Survival series. They're not really the kind of maps where I'm going to be doing precision farming, maze plus, pumps and hoses, um, which I always think of boats and hoses. For some reason, I'm always thinking boats and hoses. Uh, but yeah, we're going to try just just to play this. I have been looking at a few maps which I'd like to set this up on, and I think this is probably the one that stands out the most. Some good field sizes. Um, I do like the cow farm. I think it's got a nice open pasture, and with us using the grazing mod that I've set up perfectly for this, um, we can obviously use that as well. And also combine it with maize plus precision farming. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a good map for it. I did look at Perbic Valley, but. Um, I was having some issues with that, so instead we're just going to be trying it on this, which is still a really good map, and it won't be a long series, it's just going to be to try out these features, because I am pretty much just waiting for a couple of maps to come out, uh, but they're not anytime soon, they're probably a couple of months off at least, so I thought, why not try it out and uh, get hands on, because I feel like I need to be playing with Maze Plus a bit, a bit more, and Precision Farming especially. Um, and now that we've got the, the Boats and Hoses DLC, um, we can... Yeah, use that as well. So, the way that I've set this up so far is I haven't got all my kit. I have purchased all the vehicles that I'll need, and I haven't skimped out. We have got some good kit here to use. Um, and we've also got a Red Rock trailer. I've put a few things in over here. We've got a separator from the, the, the Pumps and Hoses DLC. We've also got an extra slurry storage uh, tank over here, which is pretty good. And I've put some slurry into it. So it's probably around 200,000 in total with what I've got sitting in the, the map one as well, which is perfectly fine, but I just wanted to try this out. I do like the look of it, so I thought I'd do that as well. Um, we've got some kit that we're going to need for slurry sp uh, spreading with the, the DLC, of course, and I've got a separator going on over here, so it is actually separating out uh, the liquid slurry and taking it out the solid, which you can actually use for bedding. Um, and also, you can sell it and uh, spread it on the field. So we're, we're pretty much just all set now. I have got, like I mentioned, this all set up for grazing. So the feed will, will happen um, as soon as we go into probably the next day, September. Um, it does refresh every couple of hours, but uh, we'll, we will start seeing a proper impact after probably September, the second day in the month. Um, and I am doing three-day seasons as well, just so you know. Now, I did put in a, a manure pit over here. The cow's just happily just sitting in it, as you do. Now the only reason I put this in is just because I like it physical on the map to look at with the manure coming out so we can see how much we've got. The way I think this map works is it actually stores it in the cell and you can take it out. Because if you come over here you can see that I've got two and a half thousand litres and that's just as I was setting up. Look at the cow. It's like I'm going to climb over this and then magically walk through the wall. Now feed wise if we just have a quick look. At the animals i have got 30 now you might not think that's much but it really is now that we're using maize plus we're also using the add-on as well so we've got increased food consumption increased slurry output all the outputs really milk st everything straw manure is all increased but again the the feed's going to be consumed a lot quicker um, and we have to wait now till uh, that we get milk we're not going to be getting milk as, as you do in the base game version. It's more realistic now, so when when in the real world, when a, a, a cow's about to milk, it's now um, in line with that. So that's that. I do, I, I do like that. I prefer it. So what I have done is given them 123,000 litres of straw, which should keep them tied them, tie them over for a bit. That will that means I don't have to worry about rushing to get the feed in. We've got grazing, like I said, enabled, so that's going to consume some feed. But what I did do is add quite a bit of feed and a top top, and you can see that they have consumed quite a lot already. So we're gonna we're pretty much in a rush to get the feed on the go. Um, so before we actually start doing something, we're going to be actually be doing some slurry spreading because why not? We've got the DLC. We're going to start, uh, but I think first I'm just going to talk you through the kit that I have got. So. Like I said, I've got the Red Rock trailer, um, and this is the main kit that I've got. We're not skimping out because, like I said, it's not going to be uh, an episode, a series that um, we try and start off from scratch kind of thing and work up. We are starting off with established kind of equipment, and we're going to try and just, you know, and start using Maze Plus with, in comparison with, like, precision farming and so on. So we've got some good kit here. So I've gone with a, a Class Jaguar. I'm going to be using that for doing Maze Silage in a bunker, probably. We're going to be doing Whole Crop Silage, I think, 
because we've only got the one bunker, unless another place another one down, I'm I'm gonna probably do bales of whole crop and like plonk them here, for example. I think that'll be a good good idea, and then we can also put some grass silage bales somewhere else with the hay. Maybe store them in there near, near where we get the milk out. So that's uh, that's gonna be definitely used quite a lot in this series. My dog's barking his head off, as you do. So the next piece of kit that I've got here is just a small. It's one of the small tracks I've gone for in New Holland. Um, it is pretty simple actually, but I've got a front loader attachment on it if needed, but we have got the, the JCB load hall over here. Um, and I do like this in, in grey, so this one, we'll probably be using this more to stack bales and pick up anything that we need, probably when we're doing the feed mixes as well with the TMR mixes, because that's going to be pretty important in this series. Um, and then I'm kind of working up over here in size tractor, but I actually think that these two are probably the same when it comes to HP, but we'll have a look in a second. McCormick, so a nice hefty McCormick there. All wide tyres because we've got some big fields. Got a New Holland T7, the HD version. And then this one has got the most horsepower and we've gone with the Fent. So that's the 942 Vario and yeah, this will do the job pretty well. So if we just have a quick look at the kit itself, you can see the small tractor is 100 horsepower. The medium tractors we've got here, 313 with the T7, which is pretty good and 240 with the McCormick, so they aren't the same, I thought they were originally. And then we've got 415 with the fence, so pretty decent that is. So like I said, we're starting off relatively bare when it comes to equipment. We've got some good tractors and good kit, but we do need to buy all our grass stuff, pl plonk it into certain areas, but we can do that over time as we need it. The money I started with is pretty much 400,000, but I have spent a little bit just getting some of the, the equipment over there. Um, I actually started with 500,000, sorry, and I've spent uh, a bit just trying to get all the slurry stuff that we need. Um, so yeah, we're at 368. And then I've gone with the, actually the, the 2022 20, version of the Lexian. So it's it's really modern version. Um, and I've gone with a massive header for corn and for um, any grain type. Now the reason I've gone with the corn header is because we've actually got some sunflowers in the fields and if I just show you the map it can give you an idea of where we are placed on this map. So as you can see this is the section we own, that's the biogas plant over there. We've got uh, pretty much here, one, two, three, four, four grass fields, a massive field over here of sunflowers that's growing. It's actually in a good state as well. Uh, just needs, I think it's got some weeds in so we might need to sort that out so we'll get to that at some point. But that's why I've got the corn header because we're going to be doing a big harvest of sunflowers because it's already set up that way. We've got field 27 that's a ploughed field ready for us to put anything in. So this would be perfect for May silage, I think. It's not too far from the the uh, the bunker as well, so it's not uh, a big distance to travel. So I think field 27 is going to be where I put maize. And I'm probably going to be putting whole crop in one of these four grass fields because we don't need four grass fields. So it makes sense to do that. Maybe this one, field 31, and we can do bales from it. I know I need a lot of feed, but grass silage, we're going to be getting from these three, let's say, with hay as well, and then we're going to be doing whole crop, maize, and we'll see if we can do anything else along the way. Pretty much that's all I'm going to need. I do like doing the maize and the whole crop, but if we look at a feed mix, when we do get a feed mixer, uh, the, the recipes that are set up in the game, which is the way we're going to be doing it, so there's young stock, beef cattle, dairy farming, standard, and then there's a realistic one. We could use the realistic one because it's got loads of options. We could set our own custom one, but I think I'm going to go for dairy if I'm obviously feeding dairy cows, if I get some beef cows, if I've got young stock and so on. Uh, we'll play it like that. I think that's the best way. Right, so let's get some farming done. It's always the best thing to do on this game. Can I open the gate? There we go. And what we're going to be doing is spreading some slurry. We've got 200,000 litres sitting in that thing over there. So that's quite a bit to get through. Um, separator takes forever, by the way. Absolutely ages. What's this now? 448 litres. You'd be there for a long time doing that. But we may as well just keep it going. Um, so yeah, we're going to go out in that direction. The only field that I can really focus on with precision farming here is field 25. And that is because when I started this map up which was pretty much in August because we're now in September yeah or in, in August this field was just planted and it was planted grass so it, it, they had no, we had no grass and it's now in its first growth stage and it's a you know it's a good it's a good point to start adding some uh, slurry to it so we can improve the the pH levels and that we don't need to because obviously it's grass but I think I just want to try out this mod 
a little bit more. I have practiced a little bit um, on another map that I was playing. Just I have practiced a little bit, but I thought we'd just try it out in this this video straight away. Uh, but yeah, we're going to focus on doing this. pH we need to sort as well. Nitrogen levels, as you can see, are just depleted, but with it being grass, that's not too much of an issue. Um, I have scanned all these fields, so we're, we're pretty good, but everything, as you can imagine, needs lime, and we need to, yeah, sort it out. We need to try and come up with a plan. I do like how this patch down here, though, is pretty much loam. I do like that. Better if it was loam, but still, not too bad. But yeah, field 25 is what we're going to do. It's a big field, but we're going to spread slurry in it. So, what we need to first do is get ourselves a little tractor. Now, I'm trying to think what best one to do this in, because we need a certain horsepower. So if we have a look at slurry tanks, this is the pump that we're going to be using. Now it totals 1,000 meters of, of uh, piping. So we've got exactly 1,000 meters of pipe to, to use. Now it does require 200 horsepower, so we're going to need a tractor. And that's pretty much our pump, so that's what we're going to be using to pump out the uh, slurry. So this is what we're going to be using. I think this uh, McCormick will do the job perfectly. Um, so we just need to pick up the pump, which is there. The wrong way here. And then we're going to leave this by the slurry tanker. Or the slurry tank. Probably need a front weight on this. We'll see how we get on. Because we're not going to go far. We're only going to go over there. Now, I think the best way to angle this is out in the direction that we're heading, which is that way. Right, so I've just put a front weight on it because I think it definitely needs that. So we're just going to place it here, and I think that should be all right. We are going in that direction. Now, what we need to do is obviously set up the pipe. Now, I think we can go from either side I know it connects from one side over here um, yeah we'll set it up and then you can buy a tool like this and it connects the hoses together so let's go and get let's go and get the T7 and this is what we're actually going to use as well to do the spreading definitely enough power put it that way so the first thing we need to do is well we'll actually put this on the rear of the vehicle because it'll be easy just to drag behind us as we are placing this around so let's get connected to that and that lift it up and then what we want to do is connect all these hoses together on this reel them all in so all we need to do is do that same again there we go so we are a thousand meters exactly and if we go over this we're going to need another pump now I do think we need another front weight so we're going to just spawn one in makes sense to do this so let's just quickly get a weight don't know which one to go for bigger the better I'd say oh, I do like that one it's only 300 though ah, we can get 500 let's do that that should be enough and yeah that'll be all right or maybe a bit darker yeah i like it let's get that there we go that's that bit done right so hopefully that'll keep us not tip it up <laughs> and then what we want to do here is about here we just want to drop this so we're going to bring up the f1 menu and we need to change it first to unwinding. And we go to this. So let's make sure we start in a good position for this. Now, the last one we did was a, a 300 meter one. So if we change it to unwinding, and then we want to start unwinding, we move forward and it should start. Now, as soon as this one drops, I'm going to connect it just to see it's all working on that end. But we are going to hope we've got enough to do this I think we should yeah we should definitely I mean, a thousand meters is quite a distance 
But we want to go all the way up this field to the right hand side. So we're going to need quite a bit. So I'm going to go up and then probably come back on myself and hope that that's enough to get across the field. So there we go. That's the first one done. So we'll just stop here a second. I do like as well how it winds back in. There's an animation for it and everything. It's pretty impressive. So we're going to go here. We're going to just attach this to that. And then if we jump in, there you go. So that's not where we want to be. We need to drag it because that's going onto the reel. So let's just move it to about here and then jump in. There you go. So now we're connected. So it's connected to the actual pump on this side. So probably better if we turned around, but it's all right. It's just gone underneath a little bit, but it still looks pretty decent. So that's that first connection done. We've got this pipe going across the field. Probably can't see it very well because it's yellow and uh, obviously the grass is quite a green tinge to it. It's early morning. Uh, but yeah, if we go back now to this, uh, what we can do is carry on unwinding the second hose that we've got. So, start unwinding again. And then off we go. We're going to go up, like I said, right to the end and come back down and hope. In fact, what we're going to do is just release all this piping, just because I'm hoping a thousand metres is enough for me to get across. It should be. Thinking about it, it should be. I do like this mod, I really do. I'm just hoping that we might get a chance to have some customised mods for it so we can see some UK equipment that's got this same feature. That would be good to see. So again, drop it. And we've got another 300 and a 100 to do so. Just shows how big this field is because we're now looking at turning around. And we're only going to be doing the patch that you can see it's not uh, meadow grass sorry we want to be doing meadow grass not the wild grass I think that should be enough if we start and do a headland from about here I think that should be enough so what we need to do now is go back and pick up the actual story spreader um, but what we can do on the way is just connect this together and we'll do the other ones as well when we come back up. So we want to attach them two together like that and that's that done. And we'll do the same in a minute over there. So I'll just get hooked up to the other ones and I'll be back in the field. Right, so I thought I'd just show you this, how I'm doing it. So I'm connecting to this first. So this is like the connector, you could call it. It's what's going to connect the pipe to this, which is obviously my arm. To spread so it's like a dribble bar now you can get ones that come with it in built but the bigger ones you do need that on top now you can have options as well where you've got a cultivator as well at the same time which is nice to see uh, but we don't want that because we're obviously doing it on grass so we just attach that like that and then we need to come from the other direction but what we're going to do is we're going to unfold this first and hope that i can just aim this in now be difficult because of that gate but we can do this there we go spot on so through the middle and when we get to about spot on there we go so we now connect it and we hold to attach the hoses and i think because i'm using manual attachments i think that's okay so we can now fold it back up can head out to the field and we can start connecting them pipes and then eventually connect this to the, to the final end of the pipe and come back down here and turn the pump on now the way that pump works is as long as it's in a trigger for slurry it'll work on anything you don't have to attach it manually to the uh, to the, uh, the slurry holding tank like that um, it just needs to be in a trigger now me personally I love the the manure mod from FS19 where you have all the hose connections and stuff. I would have liked to see it connect like we're connecting these pipes um, here. I would have preferred that but it's also you know it works really well at the same time so we don't need to we don't definitely need to have that. I just think it's uh, pretty cool to do. So that's that one done. 
So we should have one more up here. So if you wanted to chain the pumps together to have an even longer setup, you can do that, but you're going to need a second tractor with another pump on. Right, so we're now all connected. So all we need to really do now is connect up the pipe to this and then turn her on. And we should have a nice constant flow, 200,000 litres in fact, sitting in the slurry tank on hand to this. I have gone with a 12 metre spread as well, so it should be a good job to do with the, that much because... Uh, yeah, as you can imagine, it's a, it is a lot. So we're going to unfold that first. And then we're going to attach to this. So we're attaching the umbilical cord. And there we go, we're connected. So this now will follow us along. Everything's sorted on this front. So the next thing we do is unfold that. But we're first going to go back over here to this one. And turn it on and activate the pump. Right, so, bit of an update. I had a bit of an issue with, well, I found out it was a mod conflict in the end, so I have sorted that out, and I think it was manual attachment, so maybe, uh, I don't know if this is confirmation, but maybe manual attachment is, yeah, causing a bit of a, a, an issue with the, the pumps and hoses mod. Um, what I've actually done is, originally I thought that this tanker, that I, well, this tank, should I say, this liquid manure tank, was too close to this with the trigger for the slurry, which is just here. So I decided to move it out and then placed it over here, but I was having the same problem. And the, and the issue that I was having is when I was reversing with this pump into the trigger itself, um, it was just reversing on its own. I'd lose um, all the controls and then I'd have to obviously start the game again or re reboot in from that save game. Um, so I, I thought obviously it's a conflict, so I've ended up moving, or removing should I say, the... Um, manual attachment mod with a few others there was like two more I thought it could be um, but I'm pretty certain it's the manual attachment for me on this map now that might not be the case for any other map or it could be something completely different I don't know but at least it's working now so what I've done is we've moved this I am going to tidy this all up so in the next episode I'll make it look better I could even put it back over here um, I'll figure it out but but for now it'll do the job we're all connected up uh, we're in the tractor and if we bring up the F1 menu, all we need to do now with this is activate the pump. So now that's all running, and it should be drawing out the slurry. So I have put, I think I've actually put around 100, maybe 100,000, 200,000, I can't remember now. I haven't got as much as I did have, though. So let's just uh, take a quick look just to confirm what we got. So we've got 100,000 litres, which I'm hoping should be enough, fingers crossed. Um, so now all we need to do is go over to this, which is all set up like it was, and we can now start applying slurry. Um, through the hose connections, like I said, we, the beauty of this is we don't need to go back and refill. So, we lower it down. And off we go. And I don't know if you can just tell, we are applying, it's just not a thick coat. <laughs> it's just a small application rate. We could actually go manual on this. We might be able to. Oh, we have got a course well, so we need to try and deactivate with that baby. There we go. And if we try and just pop this. Probably to about. Let's go let's get it in the green. Let's go 150. We should be applying a lot more now, and you can see that it's green. The other reason I'm doing it like that is because I know it's going to last anyway. You can't over-fertilise grass. So it's better to just add too, too much, you could say, and then we've got quite a lot of uh, cuts there. Now, I do love this mod, I really do. I'm hoping, we'll find out, if we get to the other end of this field, we should have all that. We should be fine. But if we do we know it should work a treat. Now, I am going to try a course play out with this. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work, but we're going to try it out. There hasn't been an update for course play yet, because this mod is pretty, pretty new, the DLC, but we are going to try it out. We're going to see how it gets on. 
fingers crossed it works alright I'll be surprised if it doesn't so far so good so we have got over to the far end of the field this, this side but we do need to to get over to that corner over there which I'm hoping should work I think we've just about got enough of this thousand meters now I mean, going to another part of the our grass fields we'd have to probably let's just have a quick look see if I've got enough time yeah we're currently over here just adjust again and we'll have another look there we go yeah we're over here so the furthest away I'd say with our system over there would be field 32 and if we definitely wanted to go down to field 33 we'd have to go down the main road we'd have to definitely set up some kind of chain connection there with some extra pumps I think that is the only way to do it now as you can see we've got plenty of excess pipe over here I think we've done pretty well what, how much easier is this to do now, slurry spreading? We don't have to keep going back to refill. It's just on hand, straight out. So now we can work our way backwards. We are going to drive over the, the connection at some point here, but I'll be fine. So I think after I've done the first headland, we'll uh, set up a course play. I can do a bit of a montage, I think it'll look pretty cool. I don't know how that's still connected, but it is. Oh, there we go, that's uh, looks a bit better now, sorted itself out somewhat. I mean, this is 12 metres as well, so it's not, you know, it could be smaller, but we, uh, we've we got a good, a decent enough size, but with these fields, they're just massive on this map. They are big fields, so, especially the grass fields. So it would still take some time to do this. It's not, it's not horrendous because, you know, it's there is bigger fields. But for a grass field, I think field 25 is quite big. Um, it's a shame I can't actually see the size of that field. But at least we're getting some nitrogen going in there now, which is great to see. We, need, we do need to do quite a bit to these fields to get the uh, environmental score up as well. It's been a while since I've actually played with precision farming because I've been so focused on the farmhand series and also survival they're two series that I don't play With them two mods on obviously so right so what I'm going to try and do now because why not we're going to try and do ourselves a bit of a course here now it's picked up field 25 I don't know if it's going to do over the edge it might do here but we want to do let's say we do Four headlands. We'll start on the headlands because that's what we've done here. We don't really need much of an overlap. We will take smooth corners because of the pipe. And we could skip a row. Why not? I think that should work. A treat. Tank is empty. Have I absolutely have I honestly used a hundred thousand litres? I probably have. Because I did set it to the highest. No, I haven't. I've got 64. Hmm. Well, that is interesting. And the pump's still running over here. We've used quite a bit, in all fairness, though. But why would it stop? That's the, that's the interesting part. It's like Cosplay doesn't know. So we need to first drop that down. There we go. Yeah, it's still applying. You can see that it's still applying. But when course plate runs, it's... Uh... Yes, it, it doesn't... Um... It doesn't recognise it, does it? That it's got any left. Yeah, so it does see it is empty. So what we'll probably see at some point then is, is an update on that one. So what I'm going to do though is time lapse. It's the best solution for this. We'll do a time lapse. We'll just drop this down and we'll carry on. And we may as well go this way now. 
and then we'll also clear out this course but we definitely need to get this fertilized that is the task at hand and then as soon as this is done we can start um, worrying about what we're going to do in the next episode which I think has got to be a priority now is feed uh, but what I'll do is I'll quickly get through this field I'll get it fertilized I'm probably going to run out you know so what I might do quickly before we do anything like that is just just apply a hundred kilograms of nitrogen per hectare just so it seems like we're lasting out a little bit so we will get the yellow now if we look at precision farming which is probably easier to scroll this way yeah you can see that I'm on the yellow but uh, it's better than running out so we'll see how far we get with it just goes to show how much nitrogen we actually need or slurry should I say to uh, look after these fields it's a big job Right, so we've completely, oh, cows saying hello. Yeah, we've completely emptied out this tank, uh, slurry tank, which had about 100,000 liters in. So, yeah, that just, just goes to show how much slurry you need. I mean, it is a big grass field, but yeah, goes to show. I mean, we did use quite a bit here. It probably would have lasted us out in all fairness if we just did it to this rate, which is what you, the automatic rate is. So, if we had done that, then yeah, you can tell that uh, we probably would have finished that off with ease actually with with the required rate uh, but yeah we've done some and that's the main thing we will do some more as soon as we get some more slurry definitely do some sorting out before the next episode we'll get a little bit more equipment i'll get set up to do some grass work i have been looking as well at the calendar so the crop calendar just because i know i want to plant some corn but we're not going to be able to do that now till the start of next year so we're not going to be it's going to be pretty much 12 months before we're going to get any may silage so a full year is going to go by so we might have to fly through and just make hay and some silage and then we also want to do whole crop we can plant in some wheat for example or some barley or anything like that and do some uh, yeah winter crop to then harvest next year as whole crop silage 
We have got the sunflowers, but that's just going to be a crop to make a bit of cash. So yeah, there isn't really much we can do except wait on that side um, and do some hay. So we can obviously use the new um, tedding system, the drying system, um, and we can make some grass sides because we do need a lot of feed now, we really do. So we'll definitely get to work on that before the next episode I'll get set up as well. I've already got 20,000 litres. That's pretty decent. But what I'm going to do first, before I end the video, is I'm going to just show you how I've set up the grazing. So you can see that this patch of grass here where the cows are, um, I think I did get quite a good coverage on this. So we're going to skip time. We're going to go into September day two. We'll take a look at the food now, and then we'll also have a look just to see what happens because they're going to consume quite a lot. So we're at 104,000 and we are doing pretty well. So let's just, uh, let's, in fact, let's go to like nine o'clock and see what happens. So in the moment, just going down. 103, it's gone down again. There you go. So as you can see, that's the coverage we've got when it comes to the grazing. And I think I got a pretty good portion of the field there. So it goes from this point here, across, all the way across over there, and pretty much to the track. You can see it goes a little bit into the track, but that is a lot of surface, a lot of grass, land area, for me to pick up for feed. So we sh it should do us good. I mean, it's obviously taken one growth down, but we are in September, so the grass will grow back. But when we start getting to like the November, December months and all that stuff, we're not going to really have grass growing so we need to make sure we've got a lot of feed left but it has already jumped up to 105 so we're doing well Surrey's already at 12,000 again um, yeah it's crazy how much these cows consume now it's going to take a, a bit of adjustment to get used to but if we just stock up on feed have more than we probably think we need that's never going to be a bad thing I do like it though There's so many different aspects of the game now so many additional features of gameplay it just improved the game a lot but I think on that note that's a good point for me to end the video on we've done a bit of story spread and you can even see it really good from here how much we've done not much when it comes to the size of the field uh, but we've got a plant we've got a lot to do as well and it should be fun something to tie us over until another map comes out just as a bit of a easy let's play and use all the features I'll still be doing my survival series and obviously my farm and series I'll be working on that as soon as possible. Uh, but I thought I'd just do something different as well. So thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up because that does help my channel out. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator.